program overview of A Community Thrives. Um, we are pleased to host you and um, look forward to hearing your questions. If you have some, they can be posted on the chat um, and we will review those at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, today on the call, uh, leading the call, we have uh, Bethany Natoli, who is the Director of Community Engagement for Mighty Cause. And Mighty Cause is our presenter, uh, is our, sorry, uh, partner in the initiative and the, for the crowdfunding portion of the program. And um, she'll have an opportunity to uh, go over their role in a little bit. And uh, myself, um, I'm the Director of the Gannett Foundation, which is the philanthropic arm of Gannett. So the agenda uh, for this call is to uh, walk you through the basics of the program, um, how your organization can get started, um, an overview of the opportunity, the financial opportunities related to the program, and um, key things that you need to know. Um, again, if you have questions, you can um, drop them into the chat, and the session will be recorded, and the link will be available on the Community Thrives Mighty Cause uh, homepage. So what is a Community Thrives? Um, Gannettco and um, Gannett Foundation partner on this philanthropic program that leverages our extensive locally based network of print and digital outlets to connect consumers to community need by promoting opportunity for national exposure grants and cultivating new donors, as well as connecting you with your existing audiences again for this particular challenge. Um, the program has distributed more than $12 million since 2017, um, including uh, the grants and the leveraged fundraising. Um, and this is our opportunity to connect uh, our storytelling that goes on every day with our community and the needs in your communities. Um, the program focuses on community building, though there are several metrics um, by which we rate um, applications in the initiative uh, for the grants in the program, and we can discuss that in a little bit. Um, but community building in general uh, for us is defined as projects that are directed toward the creation or enhancement of community among individuals within a particular region or within a common need. So they don't have to be locally based, they can be locally based. Um, and then in particular for the national um, project grant consideration, uh, we look at um, both local as well as national programs. So um, the basic uh, um, component of the challenge piece of the initiative is the fundraising. And um, to go over the phases in general, first, the application phase is now, begins today through June 30th. Um, and then we have a couple of weeks um, that, through um, which we allow time for you to develop your, um, your crowdfunding page on the Mighty Cause platform. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. And the fundraising phase will go from July 19th until August 13th. It's a four week campaign. Um, and we, through which we have top fundraiser grants, uh, weekly challenges, um, and um, you do keep all that you raise online, um, whether you meet our minimum requirement or not. Um, and again, the, the platform partner is Mighty Cause, and, and we'll talk about Mighty Cause a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, so the uh, grants that are available through the initiative um, are both national project grants, which range from 25,000 to 100,000, and local operating grants, um, which uh, can be a minimum of $2,500, and there is no upper limit um, on those grants. Um, organizations must fundraise in order to be considered for the national project grants and the local operating grants. And we divide the um, applicants into two tiers, uh, organizations whose operating budgets are under $500,000 and those that are over $500,000. And there are two different requirements for tier one, the requirement is to raise a minimum of $3,000. And for tier two, the requirement is to raise a minimum of $6,000. And then the third uh, phase of the program is the announcement phase, which will be in late September and early October. Um, or early October. <laughs> We're shooting for September 30th. Um, 
So to be considered for the challenge and for the grant application, um, you must first apply. And that application is live today on the Mighty Cause um, platform page. And we will um, direct you towards that um, in a few moments. Um, you must fully complete the application um, by, the, by June 30th at 9 p.m. There are no late entries. Um, organizations that are 501c3s um, are eligible. Non-501c3s, including public schools or other um, municipal organizations, um, and fiscally sponsored projects um, are also eligible to apply. Um, 509A3 organizations and private non-operating foundations are not eligible for the program. Um, and as you, um, what we would suggest is that you gather your information on your um, proposed project um, prior to sitting down and filling out the application. Um, and you would need a project budget, um, a project description, um, and information about outcomes, sustain program sustainability, and um, what would you do, um, what outcomes would be changed if you are not granted your full amount um, for the initiative. So we, those, the questions do guide you through, um, through the information that you need to provide us. Um, okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Bethany, who will go over briefly um, about Mighty Cause. Thanks, Sue. Uh, and hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm just going to share a little bit of information about Mighty Cause and more of the fundraising, crowdfunding aspect of the challenge. Uh, as Sue already mentioned, Mighty Cause is the technology platform, the fundraising platform that is the partner for this challenge um, throughout the uh, fundraising portion of the challenge, Mighty Cause is going to be your go-to contact for any technical support, um, and we will share some information at the end of today's uh, training where we um, give you the information about how to contact our technical support. Um, just a little bit about Mighty Cause, you know, in general, for anybody that's not familiar, uh, we're a year-round fundraising platform. Um, we are a full software as a service suite of tools for nonprofits, schools, uh, and we host large-scale giving days, giving events uh, like this uh, Community Thrives Challenge. And we also have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools, a built-in CRM, integrations, donations, forms, uh, lots of really great features that you'll see as you get into the platform, um, many of which are available to you uh, by participating in this challenge. And so later in the process, um, you will be able to get more information on how to use Mighty Cause and what you can do on your page and how to access certain uh, things in your platform where we'll have other trainings that are dedicated to that. Um, but just wanted to give you a brief overview of Mighty Cause. Um, for those of you that are relatively new to the fundraising challenge concept, um, as Sue mentioned, uh, there's really two key components, two phases of this. Uh, the first phase is this fundraising phase of the challenge where all nonprofits that are participating in this initiative uh, are running their own fundraising campaign with the chance to earn um, <clears throat> the fundraising grants, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, so that's really the piece that we're talking about here. Uh, the second phase, as, as Sue um, mentioned, is the grant, grant making phase. Um, but our goal here is to help uh, all participating nonprofits to meet those fundraising minimums so that they are eligible to be considered for the uh, other grants. So basically what you'll need to do, um, you know, and what, what this really is all about is bringing causes together um, to raise funds for, you know, in this case, community building across the country. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if Sue will mention or not, but there's lots of really incredible uh, local initiatives that have been funded throughout the years uh, through this program. Uh, so the goal is really to work collectively give you a chance to raise awareness for the work and the mission of your organization, give you the opportunity to compete and earn those fundraising grants, uh, as I mentioned, um, as well as hopefully become eligible for those merit-based grants if you meet the fundraising minimum, uh, potentially engaging you know, local uh, businesses as a sponsor for you, community partners, engaging peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, uh, lots of elements that your individual nonprofit can take into consideration when planning your own fundraising campaign as a part of this challenge. 
And so really to break it down, the key things that your nonprofit needs to do, uh, very first and foremost is apply to participate. So um, the we will make sure that a link is sent out to everybody who registered and attended today, uh, but you can go to a communitythrives.mightycause.com uh, and you'll find more information as well as the link for the application process there. Once your application is approved, you will want to update your Mighty Cause profile and build out your fundraising campaign. So what are you raising money for? What is the goal? Um, how are you planning to promote that campaign via social media, email? Um, how are you going to get your board members involved to help spread the word? Are you going to engage any peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers to help support your initiative? And then starting July 19th, you start to raise money for your cause. You have that four-week time frame to uh, raise funds. And um, as we'll talk more about in a few minutes, uh, based on what you raise during the four-week fundraising challenge, you're also eligible for, um, for a number of other fundraising grants that will keep uh, your donors uh, hopefully engaged uh, and excited about the opportunities um, throughout the challenge. So um, during the fundraising phase, we, we categorize all of these grants as fundraiser grants. And um, we have um, awards for the top three organizations with the most dollars raised. And that is true for both tiers. So um, large organizations um, will be in one category and smaller organizations in another category. And so the challenge period is the entire fundraising phase uh, for these particular grants. And then as you see here, there's first prize, second prize, and third, third prize um, for both tiers. And um, what the only caveat here is that organizations must have a minimum of 10 unique donors to be eligible. And what, what we need to make clear here is that the, the funds have to be raised on the platform, um, not outside of the platform. Um, and during the fundraising campaign, there are these bonus challenges, which are weekly challenges, both for um, the most unique donors, as well as the most raised in, in those particular weeks. Um, and then again, so there um, is opportunity for both organizations, um, smaller organizations and larger organizations. Uh, we award the, the bonus challenges in each tier. Um, and then these are just um, the same type of bonus challenges um, repeating in week, weeks three and four. Um, the challenge rules are, um, are outlined on the Mighty Cause um, page under rules. And in those rules, you will find uh, a very detailed outline of, um, of the program, and as well as the uh, metrics used to decide on the grants um, that the foundation uses to decide grant winners. Um, and so after you review all those, um, you know, let us know if you have any questions, but, um, but it, uh, the very basics here are that um, recipients will be selected in both, both tiers of organizations. And as I mentioned before, there's two tiers, one um, of organizations less than $500,000 and the minimum to be raised to be considered for the merit-based grants is $3,000. And then the larger organizations, the minimum to be raised is $6,000 to be considered for the merit-based grants. Um, and what are unique donors? Unique donors are donations to your campaign from a unique individual. Um, and then donations um, using your nonprofit's credit card um, are not permitted. Um, those are called proxy donations. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there are two types of uh, grants offered through the initiative, which are true grants um, based on merit. National project grants, there are 16 of these and they range from $25,000 to $100,000. Um, and then the local operating grants, which are um, would be more than 100 different grants in, um, in communities across the country. We have um, 12 different regions that we use um, as a way to review these grants. And we have regional committees that review the application applications of those organizations who have met the minimum. Um, the national project grants are reviewed by the foundation's board as well as myself. Um, and together they are announced, um, will be announced um, targeting September 30th 
this year. Um, again, the grant selection criteria um, are available in the rules document, which is posted on the challenge website. All right. Um, so we've covered most of the basics of what the challenge is really all about, what the different phases are, um, and we just wanted to kind of finish today out with some key things to uh, make your organization aware of. Um, and again, if you have questions, please feel free to type them and we'll try to get to them at the end of this. Uh, so the first is, as a part of this, a, a Community Thrives fundraising challenge, uh, there is a whole toolkit of resources that have been prepared to help make, um, make this process and the fundraising phase in particular easier for your nonprofit. So um, we'll have this info session recording will be posted on the toolkit. There is a getting started uh, recording uh, posted on the toolkit that getting started um, webinar session that is already pre-recorded is really gonna go through everything that you need to know on how to use the Mighty Cause platform, how to get your fundraising profile set up, how to access you know, your donations report, details like that, as well as refreshing on some of the basics of the challenge that we've covered today. Um, and there's also an upcoming webinar, which I'll mention more in a moment, focused on strategy. Uh, you can find the sign up link there. So you've got access to these on demand webinars. Uh, there's also a number of other resources available in this toolkit, a checklist, a planning guide, email templates, social media tech templates, uh, and logos for a community thrives and Gannett Foundation in case those are helpful as you build out your own communications plan for this campaign. So again, a community thrives.mightycause.com. That's really where you're going to find all the information about this challenge. And one of the tabs on that page is the nonprofit toolkit, where you'll find all of these resources. Key dates to remember the application period, as Sue mentioned, is open now. It opened today at noon Eastern. So as soon as this info session is over, we encourage you all to head right to the A Community Thrives .com website, access the application and begin the process. You do have the ability to um, save your application and come back to it and submit later if there's some information you're still working to complete. Um, although, as she mentioned, no late entries will be accepted. So make sure that you have a plan in place uh, to complete and submit your application ahead of June 30th. The fundraising challenge will begin July 19th. So from as soon as you apply and are approved until July 19th is your window of opportunity to plan your fundraising campaign, strategize around how you're gonna um, go for some of those bonus challenges or the top fundraiser grants, uh, how you're really gonna pull your fundraising campaign together. The challenge will go through Friday, August 13th, also at noon. Uh, and then as Sue mentioned, uh, announcements for the grant recipients will be done, ideally by September 30th. <clears throat> as I mentioned, there is another upcoming webinar, a live webinar that we will host uh, Tuesday, June 29th. This webinar in particular is gonna talk much more about strategy for the fundraising challenge. Um, so, We'll, of course, always refresh on some of the key basics, but that's where we will really have an opportunity to get into a little more detail uh, with some recommendations on, you know, securing a matching grant to support your campaign, perhaps engaging peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, and how's the best way to do that, uh, ideas and tips for your email and social media campaigns. So again, um, make a note. Uh, you can go to the website and register for that training right now. Um, or come back and do it after you complete your application. That session will also be recorded and the recording will be posted on the website. So you'll be able to access it at any time. That's really our opportunity to dig deeper into uh, giving you some extra tips and tricks for a uh, fundraising strategy for the campaign. And as I mentioned before, Mighty Cause is the go-to uh, for any technical support that you uh, need during the campaign. So if you have a question on how to upload your logo to your page or how to access your donations report, or if you're able to secure a matching grant from a 
you know, local corporate partner or your board of directors, for example, and you need help uh, getting that updated on your page, Mighty Cause is the team to talk to. Um, we've got a whole library of self-help re resources available at support.mightycause.com. You'll find articles, walkthroughs, FAQs there. Um, most of what you need, you can likely find there. But if you have questions, you need to talk to somebody, you can either email or call us. Uh, we're open nine to five, Monday to Friday for um, live support. Um, and uh, if you do, if you have any questions specifically about the uh, grant process, uh, that would be really more a question for uh, Gannett Foundation. Um, but again, Mighty Cause is going to be your go-to for any technical questions during the challenge. And with that, I am going to open it up for questions. So I'm going to um, pull up some of the questions that have been posted, uh, and I will uh, start reading them out, and either Sue or I will uh, take some of them. Hey, Bethany. There are some I noticed in the chat as well. So there's yeah. some in chat and some in the Q&A. Yep, I will. I'll start with the Q&A and then pop over into chat. So wherever oh. you asked your question, we'll <laughs> uh, to get an answer uh, for you. And if we are not able to get to all of the questions today on this live session, we will follow up with you to make sure you get an answer. Um, okay, I'm just going to start working through. It looks like a couple of these first ones are directed towards Mighty Cause. So I will uh, take those. First one is when using Mighty Cause, can we upload offline donations or will you only recognize donations made directly through the platform? A uh, great question. So technically, yes, you can upload offline donations to your page on the Mighty Cause platform, but only online donations made through the challenge website will count for the minimums and the bonus challenges, the weekly bonus, the top fundraiser grants. So if you are, you know, if you do get a large offline donation and you'd like to reflect that on your fundraising page, you're welcome to do it, but only online donations are going to count towards uh, any of those challenge totals, challenge minimums. So encourage you to try and um, direct your donors to make gifts online if possible. Um, there are multiple ways that donors can make their gifts online, credit card, PayPal, Apple Pay and ACH. Um, if you do have a donor making a very large gift, I would encourage ACH as the form um, of donations, but they can see all those options when they go and uh, complete their uh, donation on the platform. Bethany, can you speak to how matching gifts um, would be reflected or not on the fundraising page? Sure, sure. So I mentioned matching gifts uh, when I was uh, chatting earlier, um, because that's definitely a strategy. We recommend organizations uh, try and build into their campaign if possible. Um, so if you do get a matching donor uh, that wants to add uh, a match directly for your organization, you have an opportunity in your um, fundraising page, in your account to add that match to your page as primarily a display feature so that donors to your page see that there is also a matching grant opportunity and that their donation, their impact can be doubled. The um, matching dollars, you know, say your organization gets a $5,000 match, that $5,000 of matching gifts will not be a part of your official online total unless your matching donor chooses to make their gift through the platform. So it's up to you and your matching donor if you want them or if they prefer to just give you a check directly, uh, that's fine and they are welcome to do that. That's between you and your matching donor, but only donations that are made online. So whether it's a matching gift or uh, just a donation from any one of your donors, only if the donation is actually processed online via the Mighty Cause platform, does it account uh, in the official um, metrics for uh, grants and bonuses. Um, next question, will Mighty Cause use email addresses from donors? Great question and absolutely not. Uh, Mighty Cause will not um, email your donors with any kind of marketing or anything like that. The only uh, email uh, that Mighty Cause will send to your donors is their receipt when they complete their donation through the platform. 
Um, and yes, your nonprofit will get a list of all the email addresses of the donors so that you can properly thank them. So uh, as I just mentioned, when a donor completes their gift online through the platform, they will receive an automatic thank you email, tax receipt, et cetera, that you have the option to customize in your profile when you're building out your profile, but you will have access to uh, real-time reporting with all of the donor information so that you can uh, do whatever you need to do for follow-up, thanking, engaging them, adding them to your donor database, et cetera, uh, post-campaign. Okay, so the next question, uh, will this be the only Community Thrives Challenge this year? And the answer to that is yes. Um, last year, we were delayed in launching due to um, many things uh, surrounding COVID, et cetera, but um, we're trying to work back towards our uh, initial timeline, which is earlier in the year. Uh, towards the end of the year, we, we tended to um, butt up against United Way campaigns and other um, in-market activity that happens with some of our um, with some of our um, assets. So um, we will be at the minimum this time frame next year, um, possibly a few months earlier. Great. Uh, next question, what is considered a unique donor? And uh, the easiest way to think about it is a unique donor is a unique individual. So if you know you have a donor, John Smith, and he comes and gives to your uh, campaign more than one time during a single week, you know, where the bonus challenge is focused on unique donors, he will only count as one unique donor, even though he made two separate donations. So um, really simplest way to think about it is an individual, one person counts as a unique donor. Okay. The next question, do you have a list with past winners and descriptions of their projects? We do um, on the foundation, gannettfoundation.org website. If you go to the Community Thrives tab, you'll see a list for 2000, I think all the years, 18, 19, 20, um, uh, will be listed there via a link. Um, the next question, I may have missed this answer, but do national projects require national activity or can they be local projects with national significance? Um, actually, neither are required. Um, we've, we've funded hyper local um, initiatives and actually seeded even some initiatives that uh, were local in nature through the, uh, through the national grant project grant um, portion of the program. Um, will this recording be sent to us? Yep, we'll send um, a link to you all. Great. Um, is there a text to give option for this campaign? Bethany? <laughs> I will take that, yes. Um, so Mighty Cause does have a text to give feature available in the platform. Uh, it is typically available as a part of our advanced subscription. So if uh, your organization wants to have access to text to give as a part of your fundraising campaign, uh, then you'll want to upgrade to our advanced plan, which you can do for on a month to month basis. So you can just choose to upgrade while the campaign is live, uh, if you'd like to do that. Um, and you can find the option to sign up uh, through your uh, account dashboard. Uh, once you complete the application process, get approved and get access to your account. I think the next question is yours too. Yeah. yeah. Will there be a fee to use the fundraising platform during this challenge and will we need to contract for a period of time? Uh, so sort of going off the, what I just mentioned. So as a part of participating in a community thrives, participating nonprofits have access to a, a host of Mighty Cause fundraising tools without needing to sign up for a subscription. Uh, that's the majority of tools that you would need to host a good campaign. Your profile page, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, you know, fundraising pages, all your donations reports, um, all your, you know, administrative tools, everything like that is available. You don't have to uh, sign up to, you know, on a subscription, pay to use the platform in that way. Um, as I mentioned, text to give is one example of a feature that we have that is an advanced feature that if you want to have access to that, uh, you can choose to upgrade to add that to your feature set. 
um, but you don't need to access, you don't need to sign up for that advanced uh, plan to use the platform. It's really just a matter of uh, if your nonprofit is really looking to use some of those additional features. Um, there, the fee, uh, the only fee is the actual transaction fee uh, that happens on donations. So there is a Mighty Cause platform fee as well as credit card processing fees. Donors do have the option to cover those processing fees uh, and are encouraged to do so when they complete their donation. And I can't remember the exact total, but I think it was upwards of 85% perhaps of donors last year that chose to cover the fees on their donations. Um, and full detail about the fee structure, all those uh, things are available on the website in the FAQs section. Okay, so the next question is, can you talk more about the priority criteria for the projects themselves? And I'm gonna refer you back to the rules document, which out, uh, which lays out the, um, the weighted categories for both the national merit project grants, as well as the local operating grants. And just um, here, I think I forgot to mention that the national project grants, the funding has to go directly towards the project outlined in the proposal. For the local operating grants, those grants are just that operating grants and are not, um, not tied to the project itself. Um, as far as priority items around the criteria, um, I. I'm gonna, I, off the top of my head, I believe that they're all weighted um, equally, but um, with a focus on obviously community building elements of the project, sustainability, and also um, the, the, ser the, that the project serve the community um, and, um, and primarily focus on historically underrepresented groups. Great. Um, it looks like there's a question, are we encouraged to reach out to our Gannett newspaper reporters? We know to inform them on our fundraising campaign as we're working to set it up. Um, so all of our, um, our assets, our local assets will have access to a list of organizations that um, uh, have applied to the program and new this year we are um, going to be leveraging our local social outlets to drive consumers to um, to the fundraising page for the organization where they can then search um, for organizations they either know are participating um, by issue area by geography um, which we're excited about that um, as a way to further leverage um, our platform for um, for donation impact um, you are certainly, um, you know, able to reach out to your local reporters or local editors and, and raise up your organization's mission and the fact that you're applying to the program. Um, also, it, it can't hurt. Great. And I think that you missed a question there, Bethany, above that, um, about having, if you have an existing profile, but want to fundraise for a specific program, should they update their profile with that program's logo and information? Yeah. So I, it, it perhaps depends a little bit on the organization, um, your organization in particular. If you, if, if you have, if you're a chapter or um, an affiliate of a larger parent nonprofit and you either have your own unique IN or you share an EIN, but, but you're sort of a distinct uh, entity within, uh, then we likely would recommend that you get set up with you know, kind of what we refer generally to as like a fiscally sponsored uh, page so that you can have your own dedicated page. Um, but it, it depends a little bit. So on that one, I would probably recommend that you reach out to our support team so that we can understand specifically what your setup is um, and whether it makes sense to use your parent company's profile EIN page on the platform to fundraise or if it makes sense to have uh, a dedicated um, profile just for your specific, you know, entity within that parent company. Um, can you share a list of last year's winners? As mentioned, that is available on the foundation's website, www.gannettfoundation.org under Community Thrives. And I believe you've covered the next question is the Mighty, is Mighty Cause charging a platform fee per donation? Um, Yes, it looks like we actually have a handful of questions. So right. uh, I see I that there. Mm -hmm. when that uh, when they came in, whether that was before or after mm -hmm. I mentioned, um, but yes, so 
There is a Mighty Cause platform fee percentage uh, that's 2%. And then there is a credit card processing fee, 2.9% plus 30 cents. Um, you can, again, access that, refer back to it in the FAQs. Um, and donors, as I mentioned, have the option to cover those fees while they're completing their donation. And the next one, um, the user mentions that uh, something under the resources tab is not working. Um, we'll go ahead and get that updated. That out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And let's see, will donors be charged an administrative fee for the donations? Again, we just covered that. Um, covered that one, covered that one. Next question is I think a little bit of a deeper dive on the unique donor question. Mm -hmm. so a husband and a wife each donating count as two donors, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking some will donate a certain amount at the beginning. Uh, so yes, I mean, mm -hmm. if they come in as two different individuals and complete their gift, then yes. you know if if a wife comes in and you know she enters the same information, name, et cetera, that her husband did when she when he was completing the donation, it would likely look to the system as if it was the same donor. But as long as the husband and wife um, you know, come in individually and make their gifts, they should count as unique donors. Uh, re what reporting functions all are available? Um, so on your uh, Mighty Cause dashboard, you'll have access to uh, a whole host of reporting tools available. Um, as I mentioned, you will have a real time report with all of the donor information. So any donor information collected when they complete their donation, name, email address, amount, um, you know, whether they uh, added a dedication to their gift, address, et cetera, will all be available for you to download as a CSV. Um, in your um, in your Mighty Cause dashboard. Um, next question: My organization has used Mighty Cause before through uh, Georgia Gives Day. Can I use that current page, or do I have to start a new one? Um, you can use the same page if you're using your Mighty Cause profile page. You'll just obviously want to make sure the content on the page uh, is updated and edited to reflect you know, what you're fundraising for as a part of this challenge. Um, and then again, you can update the page again after this challenge is over if you're participating in Georgia Gives Day later this year. And then the next question is about um, historically underrepresented groups and, and basically how we define that. Um, and, and we do define that in many ways, not just about um, racial diversity or economic diversity, but you know, geographic diversity is a real um, thing, absolutely. Um, and um, I would consider your question specifically, um, yes, that would be an underrepresented group in our opinion. Um, let's see, can a business be considered an individual donor? Um, I would believe so, yes, right, Bethany? Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. As long as they, you know, as long as the business is making the gift. Again, I think really just boil it down to a, a unique person is entering that credit card information when they complete the payment. So they technically would count as an individual donor, as a unique donor. Yeah. And then, Bethany, on the next question, um, it specifically asks, like, how they should represent the fact that they are fiscally sponsored, like in your opinion, um, I guess in my opinion, it would, it would um, if you're being fiscally responsible, I'm sorry, fiscally sponsored um, and you are not a 501c3, you would want to list um, and apply under the fiscal sponsor so that their EIN is associated with your application. Um, and you would probably wanna make that clear to the donor as well. Um, but yes, you'll definitely want your information included in there as well as what the project is, et cetera. Um, yeah, and I would just add, if you are a fiscally sponsored organization, you'll want to look for the specific instructions right above the application form for your <laughs> Uh, for your use case, we do have a process on the platform that fiscally sponsored organizations can participate, but we do first need to get some information from you so that we can build a page for you that uses your fiscal sponsors EIN, but still gives you a dedicated page. So if you are a fiscally sponsored organization that wants to participate, um, don't just complete the application form and enter the EIN of your sponsor. First, 
you'll want to contact support at mightycause.com, um, access the instructions that are right above the form, which tell you what information we need from you so that we can build you a page. And then you'll come back once you have a fiscally sponsored page set up, you'll come back and complete the application form uh, using that page that we've built for you. And then yes, as Sue mentioned, um, technically for legal purposes, the EIN that's tied to your page will be a, that of your fiscal sponsor, um, but always a great idea for transparency for donors and visitors on your page to, to let them know your relationship with that fiscal sponsor. And then do unique donors need to have a unique email and contact info? Uh, yes, they do. <clears throat> and if a couple donates separately, do they need to use different credit cards to be considered uh, unique? They don't need to use different credit cards, but they do need to have unique uh, email address information. Um, next, IR IRS rules require reporting donors over a certain dollar amount. Does Mighty Cause help with the reporting? of those donors, I'm not exactly sure. So Mighty Cause is not gonna do any of that reporting on your behalf, but you will have access to all of your donor information so that if you do have donors that give over a certain dollar amount, you have access to what you need, just the same as if they made the donation on your website or another event uh, that you were hosting. Okay, I'm gonna um, pop, yeah. pop over to the chat, I think. Um, do we still have time? Are we still okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we can chat for a few more minutes, try to answer a few more questions uh, for anyone uh, that has stayed on this long. Thanks for hanging in with us. We just have a handful more questions to get to. Okay. Um, if we've applied in the past, can we receive feedback um, on that past grant request to give us the best understanding to complete this year's grant? And um, the answer to that, unfortunately, is no, because I have had, um, you know, we have over a thousand applicants and um, and we don't necessarily keep notes on our review. So, um, so I guess the answer to that is no. Um, do you allow funding to be for salaries if they're directly related to the community building programs? And yes, um, in the past, it actually, we had a $100,000 grant winner where we seeded an executive director's salary for a nascent organization. Uh, um, let's see, you've already covered that question, the grants and bonuses. Are the grants and bonuses, et cetera, all considered discretionary or non-discretionary? So every, every fundraising um, grant or um, the weekly bonus challenges are operating support. So they're yours to do with as you wish. Um, local operating grants are, are that, operating grants for your budget. So um, not related to the project, but obviously just towards the mission delivery. And then the National um, Act grants, the merit-based grants um, are related to the, the project specifically that you're applying for. Um, and we will be sending the link out um, after the call. Um, as far as I think this question relates to issue areas, do we consider um, community project types specific that are more recommended? Um, it is fairly wide open. Um, but I, again, I would refer you back to the rules to look at the, the grant uh, criteria that we use to review grants. Um, we've talked about the fees and the application platform. Let's see, I don't see. Uh, there's a question, mm -hmm. just to be sure it's super clear that you don't see where the application is on the website. When you go to the website, uh, you'll see a navigation menu that includes information about the rules, resources, and then there's a tab labeled application. Clicking on that tab will open up the application. But when we send out the recording to today's a webinar, I will also make sure that the dedicated application link is included in that email so that you can find it easily to get started. Um, the next question here is very specific to your organization, Nancy Teague, and so I'll respond to you offline. Um, we covered already offline donations. Yeah be reflect, reflected in the leaderboard. And again, some of these questions might have come in already. So um, if we skip them, it's because we've already uh, answered it. Um, yeah, are there any further activities prior to this year? Um, I don't know that we, we specifically focused on diversity last year. Um, 
I think, as I mentioned, uh, we're looking more at historically underserved or underrepresented um, um, groups and people and individuals. Uh, yes, on local operating grants, um, the uh, regional committees will decide specifically how much um, as they deem appropriate and how they would like to divide their budget based on the grant application pool. Um, um, I think we already covered that one. Uh, question about the four bonus challenges. All the information about the bonus challenges and the top fundraiser grants are also available on the website. So you can see what's the time frame of the challenge, how do you um, make yourself eligible for it? How many winners are going to be um, selected in each tier? So all that information is listed on the website. Um, the last question here is, can you apply for more than one project? Um, we haven't had that in the past, um, but there is nothing in the rules that prevents an organization from submitting more than one application for a different project. So I guess the answer to that would be, Yes. Well, the answer actually oh. for the mighty cause end is each um, nonprofit can only submit one application. Oh, okay. So then I guess that's not possible. Yes. If you have more than one project idea. Yeah. I mean, I guess my, my recommendation would be to serve up your, your highest priority project and then save, um, you know, the next one for next year. <laughs> um, um, okay. I think we've covered we've covered everything that was in um, in the chat. There might be a couple more questions that have just come in towards the end. Uh, we're at uh, 45 minutes now, so I'm going to go ahead and and end the session for today. But if you did ask a question and we didn't have a chance to get to it, um, we will follow up to make sure that you get the answer. Um, again, we will send a copy of this recording to everyone. Uh, we will also. Uh, send a link to the website so that you can see the toolkit, sign up for future trainings, as well as the application process as well. Um, if you do have questions as you go throughout, again, feel free to contact uh, either Mighty Cause or uh, the Gannett Foundation. Um, thanks for your time today, and, and uh, we are glad to hopefully have you on board for the challenge. Yes, thanks everyone for attending. We look forward to seeing your application and project ideas. Thank you.